The healthcare detective Frank Lally has written a book for Simon & Schuster about how to get affordable health care. Called Your Best Healthcare Now, it is available online, in-store, wherever fine books are sold. Mr. Lally is also the health correspondent for Parade and the former editor of Money and George magazines. And I hear he's just gotten even busier, and that even busier would be healthcare. It's, uh, he's senior advisor to healthcare.com. Hi, Frank. How are you making out? Hi. Well, this was a, a particularly a tough week. I mean, I think what's sinking in um, is this COVID-19 uh, is now becoming a fact of life. Um, and I think it's going to be a major fact of life shaping our lives until we get a vaccine. And that that makes people feel safe that they can get the vaccine. But that's that's at least a year away. Don't let anybody kid you about that. And here's some disturbing stuff. Even with the, with the vaccine, with this virus, um, I think this problem is going to linger. And, you know, I, I'm doing a lot of polling for uh, healthcare.com um, on people's behavior and whatnot. And I'm, I'm also looking at all the other polls in that area. How about this? If, pe- if a vaccine exists tomorrow, the American public, 45% of the American public says, no, nah, I don't think I want to take that. 25% says, I'll only take the vaccine if it's under a government order. And another 20% says, no, no, don't want it. I don't take vaccines. You know, 45% are going to be resisting the, the virus, resisting the vaccine that can cure the virus. Hmm. Quick also, question. Yeah, just, sure. just because I've been looking for people. I'm, this is my personal poll. What is the deal in Sweden? Oh, I don't know what they're up to. That's the yeah, they're just trying their own their own thing there. Um, Are they the only I group on the planet that's going a different gonna, direction. I don't I don't think it's going to go well. I mean, they're just saying we can get we can get through this without doing very much. Um, anyway, back here in good old United States. Right. Uh, now, this this is a poll we did. Okay, so this is our stuff, and I've mentioned it before, but it's worth repeating. You've got. Nearly 10% of the people say, oh, you know what, if I got one of those symptoms, you know, like dry cough or a fever or shortness of breath, even if I got it, I would not seek medical help. I'm healthy enough. I'll get past it. You know, it's all a hoax, whatever their reasons are. Another 4% said, yeah, well, if I had those symptoms, I'd wait about a week <laughs> before I tried to get any help. Now, obviously, you know, an attitude like that, and these people are a menace to themselves, to the family. We're now learning that your most contagious, your asymptomatic three days before you have any symptoms, that's when you're most contagious. And guess what? Even from the time you get this virus until the end, three weeks after, okay, three weeks after you get it, you're still contagious. So that's the problem with this thing. It's highly contagious and it does kill. So, and, and just, if you want to, one more little bad note here. According to the Wall Street Journal, these are tests are out there now, so that's that helps. Okay, who has the virus, who doesn't, and we can isolate the people who do. Okay, one out of three people who are testing negative, okay, you don't have it. Guess what? They're actually positive. So the tests are not very good. No, I, I so, was hearing that as well. But I hear, and it's just you know, and then once once that comes out. You, you, it, 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 it's like sending a garbled story. It, it, it just really reminds me of fourth grade and Mr. Cruz's class, um, mm-hmm. you know, where we played telephone in just, just as a joke. And well, this really, this math whiz mm-hmm. was, you know, he just pointed out to me. I don't know why it stuck out, but you start the information and then it just gets garbled mm-hmm. as, and social media, I'm afraid, you'll forgive me, doesn't help. And then you've got people trapped in their houses listening to all sorts of things. And it's only as good as people can filter. And sadly, people have spent too much time on their screens in the last 25 years to actually be able to curate some of this information. Well, look, here's what it comes down to, I think. We're all in the same slow boat from China, okay? You have to assume everybody around you has this virus. And by the way, that you have it and you're transmitting it. So you got to be you got to be careful, but you're essentially you're on your own. And now, huh, we already know three young people, you're all in the 30s, who have this virus. Uh, 
and then a member of our own family works in a hospital. She's an administrator in the hospital, has to be in there at least three days a week, remotely the other days, where she is sending doctors and nurses from one department to another to make sure that they can cover the ICU and they can cover the emergency room. You hear a lot about the heroes. Uh, well, this member of our family is a hero, but she's trying to assign some of the nurses and doctors who don't usually handle with the, such acute cases, and some of them are out and out refusing. Uh, every doctor we know, we know plenty of doctors now, they've all closed their offices. Um, it, it, they're too afraid to deal with a person face-to-face. -face. They're doing everything over telemedicine. If you want to know what healthcare is going to look like in the future in medical care, there you are. Telemedicine is going to be the predominant way you deal with a doctor. Um, but look, I, I, we have to get through this, and we will get through this. So what I wanted to talk about today was just some of the day-to-day -day things uh, just that, that people are doing in this community um, to get through it. Now, this has been a particularly tough uh, week for us, for Carol and for me, because two days ago uh, we had a significant death in the family. It wasn't coronavirus, uh, but it complicated it. Um, so his wife was not allowed to visit him while he was in the hospital, <laughs> getting very, very sick. Thankfully, uh, he did die at home. Uh, she was at his bedside, so we, he had that degree of comfort. But we couldn't visit. It, 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 people were in and out of the hospital. There's no way in the world that we could go into that environment and be safe. Uh, and now we can't gather. Uh, we yeah. can't gather because because of the Rhode Island rules. If you come with an out of state license plate, they tag you and uh, they quarantine you you for 14 days. Uh, <laughs> that's not going to happen. So and there is we no, can't even gather. There, I just I, I, there's no. Um, uh, I mean, obviously non-essential travel, but there's no dispensation for anything like that. No, I don't think so. You're you're there. You're there. You're you're. I mean, they're not going to say you can't come into the state. No, I understand. Saying, okay, I, I, if you're I, here, you're going to be isolated for 14 days. If yeah. you if you, you come, isolated. if you, you can come, be isolated with that family, but you're not coming around in mingling in the community or a menace to us. You might have the virus. So it's very strict rules. I mean, they try to do it only with New York license plates for a while, and then there was an uproar about that. So you know what the governor said? Okay, okay everybody. No, no, no license plates for anybody. Great, great. So, you know, I hear other families are dealing with this. I, I mean, I hear stories about drive-by memorials. Uh, in our case, I just think we'll, uh, we'll just wait, and at some point... Uh, we well, will you can gather, you'll memorial. do a proper memorial. Yeah, we'll do a proper, but it'd probably be six months from now or something like that. So, look, so Carol and I are in lockdown, right? We're in, we're in a house. It's a nice house, thank God. And it's a big enough um, house, but, but but it's a big house. Just we're prisoners, we're prisoners with privileges. I mean, you know, a lot of time together. Um, you still and, together? And, I'm sorry. I said you guys still together. I mean, you've only been <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this. That yeah, this would be the there ultimate is driving up the divorce rate in right. America. And uh, and hey, you know, honestly, seriously, people are are buying guns and ammo, and they are in lockdown. Uh, and that's not other, a good combination. They don't get along very well, and that's a real problem. You're going to be hearing a lot. You, I think you're going to be hearing a lot more about suicide and, and bad stuff like that. That's not good. Anyway, Carol and I have been married for so long. <laughs> that, <laughs> that you'll probably <laughs> stick it out. <laughs> we're fine. We're fine. <laughs> I was, I was kind of, that was an inside joke. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, I know. But, um, so, look, what, what, what are you doing about food? Uh, How do you, do you? Where do you go? What do you get? Uh, uh, I uh, not 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 as much of a problem. I still I, I like like the attorney general, not the attorney general, like the uh, surgeon general. I still shop, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, how often? Fairly frequently. What does that mean? Once every three days? Once every yeah. week? No, once, um, once yeah. every three days. Yeah, all right. That's what we're doing. I mean, that's. So um, like once every three days, and in fact, I did it yesterday. Uh, we get a we get a Labanza. We go to the Sharon Market. Uh, we haven't gone out to Guido's though. I hear they're doing a, a nice job of, of pacing people into the into yeah, Guido's. Labanza is uh, now pacing with, people in there. Yeah, I go in with disposable. I wear gloves. 
right? Now, I didn't wear a mask yesterday. Maybe I should have. Uh, some people did. Most people did not. They're only allowing 20 people into the store. It was not crowded at all. When I saw someone in an aisle, I went, Another, another aisle, aisle. right? <laughs> yeah, it's like Dodger, Dodger, right? Or Dodger cart. We played Dodger cart, um, and you know, and and they had plenty of food, and it was and it was it was good, and all that stuff. We, I, when I brought it home, um, we, I didn't. I watched a video about wiping down everything. I just thought, oh my god, it's just insanity. I can't do this. So what we did do while I was still wearing gloves and I put on a new pair of gloves while I had the gloves, we decided what we really needed for tonight for last night. Uh, I took that out of the bag, everything else we put out on the porch. Now right. it's still cold. Right. So it was like just a spare refrigerator. We won't touch it until, you know, whenever a day in a day or so. And if there, if there was any virus, it'll be gone. So that's what, how, that's how we handle it. And I've, I've got a friend in a friend in LA, you know, there's this uh, early hour where you, where, right, people, where seniors where can shop, can right? Go. Yeah, here too. Yeah, so, so and, and here too. Okay, so she goes, <clears throat> she's a great idea. Boy, I'll take advantage of that. She goes, it's jammed. Right. And not only is it jammed, it's jammed with really old people, and they're moving really slowly. <laughs> it's like, dry. and she says, I can't take this. And she goes out into the parking lot. She waits until eight o'clock when the older people have gotten their food and they've gone away, and she goes in and it was empty. Right. <laughs> it was empty. There is she there, there through it. You you know, for every one side there is the other, and it's just the comedy. And you know, of course, you totally qualify with all due deaf for oh um, my god, you know, yeah, for, for senior hour, right, exactly. Yeah, I, you I, I try to be really respectful. Now, I was in Le Mans yesterday. They did a very good job of pacing and whatnot. So I went through. And, uh, oh, by the way, you can't bring in your market bags any longer. Uh, they don't want you bring in germs like that. Well, why? So I mean, you use the paper, you use their paper, but so they have to bag it for you. Right. Uh, anyway, I went through and we were bagging and I'm, okay, I'm fine. And then a young woman came up and she put her stuff on, on the conveyor belt and we were six feet apart. Uh, and then you know what, before I could get out of there, um, this this guy with two kids just went up and jammed right next to her and started just put put his stuff on I know. on the on the on the conveyor belt. Well, that's the other side of it. And uh, I was talking to someone who has a, a, a place, <clears throat> and we were she she was basically saying, I don't know how to get people to leave their kids at home. Yeah, and in or, a lot of cases or, they can't, but. It, well, they can't. That's I not, believe the kids didn't. The kids didn't bother me. It was the father who I went understand. right up to the conveyor belt but, with the two kids. Okay, I mean, uh, he should be. You know, the, the markets in in California are putting down markers, right. so you stand on a spot, and and it's a clue, right? That well, you, you have a spot get together. In I know yes. in Sharon they've done that. I also know we're going to run out of time, but um, yeah. they've. I believe they've done that also at Le Bon's. And you're actually supposed to have one member of one family. Right. And, right. you know, a, a, yeah, and we, Carol is seen couples. <laughs> right. But, but, but this is the thing. And I was considering this yesterday. All right. And I've seen couples, too. I've seen I've seen it all. You've got a bunch of people really following the guidelines. And then you've got a fair number of people who aren't. Right. And I saw a, bar I saw a barbecue in Millington. Uh, it, I mean, what? That's knucklehead behavior. There's a barbecue in militants. People gathered around. They were having a f great time. They were laughing and whatnot. But they were all together uh, near the barbecue. <laughs> oh, guys, come on, please. Right, uh, and this again, this is going to be tough enough. And, and I think that goes very much with um, uh, that that uh, vaccine no that that survey that vaccine survey. Mm -hmm. How are your kids doing? What what they, how, what are your New Yorkers? Well, all right, yeah, I, I wanted to talk about that. So they were too afraid to come up. Uh, is what it comes down to. So uh, we've been talking about um, you know trying to think of ways that it might work. Okay, so they come up and stay in half the house and pitch a tent in the back. I mean, this is all crazy, what? crazy, right? But why why wouldn't um, they be able to I've come got, up I've and stay in half the house? Uh, because we're in the same. Oh, well, look, maybe we'll do it, and maybe they'll pitch a tent in the backyard. Yeah. But uh, I'm a friend of ours with his kids. I mean, so he's got a daughter and a, same thing, a daughter, a husband. He's got two two grand uh, daughters, 
and they're doing it. He's got a big house and they're trying to stay in half the house. They don't eat at the same times. He says he hasn't hugged his granddaughters in weeks. I, I, I got to tell you something. If my kids come here, I'm hugging them. I mean, that's part. Well, there, I'm, there, I'm, there's a point at which you kind of have to balance that out. And when you start thinking yeah. about how many families are uh, actually in much closer quarters together, you know, you almost have to just decide what works for your personal because I think isolation. You're in, the same at, you're in the same atmosphere. You're, you're breathing, in the same yeah. house. Uh, it, you know, you're sharing the air. Yeah. Uh, you know what? You're doing it again anyway. You may as well get the. You may as well have to get the closeness of it. Um, so anyway, that we don't know where that is. We don't know where that's going to end up. Um, <clears throat> I also. We're also running into all kinds of, uh, pro- you know, <laughs> in the, I, I was really smart, right? So I bought a lot <clears throat> of Yankee tickets for the summer. Uh, we're all the great games, right? The Mets and the uh, Red Sox and the Astros. I couldn't wait for that. I got these great tickets. Carol says, what are you doing? Why are you spending money? You're spending a lot of money on those tickets. What are you doing? I said, ha, you do not understand capitalism. These are the great games. If I decide I don't want to get it, go to any one of these games, I'll just sell them for a profit. Well, <laughs> guess what? <laughs> Carol says, no, I understand capitalism just fine. You don't understand uh, pandemics. Oh, God, absolutely. And, and we tri- you know, we canceled our trip to Italy. Well, okay, so now, now we're trying to get our money back from Alitalia. So I have, a doctor, I have a doctor's note, right, that says I'm not fit to travel. I had two epidurals. My back is really bad. All true. Uh, this guy's got a rough time walking. Uh, he's not fit to travel. So we send that in. You know what Alitalia says? No, nope, like- sorry, no refund unless you've been hospitalized. Epidurals don't count. Oh, no, for f- forget it. But hey, we're going to give you a credit. So you can fly. Uh, you just have to use your tickets by December 31st, okay? What does fat chest mean to you? Trip, who's tra- planning a trip <laughs> in, uh, to Italy? This year, okay, that's money. <laughs> that, that's money that's flying out the window. I, I've just we're we're going to run out of time, and I think we should just just do we yeah. should do, we should do a diary because you know what? It's, <laughs> no, seriously, it's interesting. Yeah. So that's what we're going to do. There's going to be part two. It's going to be a verbal like what and how we're going to also include um, just how ridiculous some of the you know once people start thinking i hope you can see my air quotes it's, yeah. some of these recommendations are pretty preposterous um well they they sure can't make up their minds about whether to wear a mask or not and uh, now they now they're saying just throw a kerchief over your fa- face i'm thinking uh, of those bandito I, I billy the they kid know what what the hell that that part of it they don't know what the hell they're doing and I think that that's something that we should um, expound upon yeah. um, during our I, next I show. I guess I, you know, listen, I can throw a bandana around. I mean, we'll yeah. all walk around like bandits. Exactly. Right? I'm the face know. face max. By the way, the, crime is down significantly. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's here's the good news, folks. They're afraid to. They're afraid to mug you. <laughs> they don't want to get close enough to. You know, they don't want to break into your house and get the virus. On the bright <laughs> That's side, the good news. All right. The bad guys are afraid to go near you. <laughs> Thank you, hey, Frank. If a and... bad guy, you know, hey, here's the best thing I can tell anybody: if a bad guy comes near you, start coughing. Yeah, cough or sneeze, <laughs> quick. <laughs> Um, thank you, Frank, the healthcare detective and senior advisor to healthcare.com. Our condolences to your family. Send your questions or concerns about finding affordable health care to healthcaredetective at robinhoodradio.com. Frank will try to address as many of your questions as he can on future broadcasts. Also look for his book, Your Best Healthcare Now, available online in store on my desk.